Okay, so one of the most important, if not uh, the most important, I think is the kick drum in house music. And, uh, you know, there are several ways to create one or not create. You just, just can, you know, import a sample or fix your own. I'm going to show you two ways. I'm going to show you the analog and the digital wave. Um, I'm going to create my own uh, kick on the Moog Subsequent 37 and then with our amazing uh, plugin from Sonic Academy, the kick, which, uh, you know, I... Kick 2. I just found out that, you know, it's really, really good and really, really powerful. So, you know, if you don't have a, a synthesizer that uh, and a filter that can self-oscillate, you can easily do that from uh, Kick2. It's just the same. It's great. So I'm going to show you both ways. Uh, let's start working uh, our kick on the Moog. Yeah. <laughs> right now, I have two oscillators enabled, so... What I'm going to do is to disable both of them. There's nothing on the keyboard, so I'm going to uh, crank resonance 100%, and then you can hear that the filter can self-oscillate, and I can also track it on the keyboard, but I'm not going to do it right now because I just want a single note. You see here? playing with the envelope amount to define the the pitch and how low my kick want I uh, want to be so this is this is um, this tweak is on the 6 uh, db per octave pole on 12 sounds like this, 18 like this, 24 like this. So if you want a, um, a more 808 style, you go to 24. It's more creamy. Uh, I want it to be more distorted, so I'm gonna choose the 6 dB per octave. Once I'm quite happy, I'm going to tweak the envelope generators. So the ADSR for the filter. And then for the amplitude. It can be a pain, but once you find it, it's too low. I'm giving some drive. From the keyboard track and the uh, envelope amount, I can somehow fix my click. Yeah, we're getting there.
really, really fast uh, envelopes. Mm, I like that. I think we're here. Yeah. I think it's good. So I'm gonna record it. If you want your MIDI notes on Logic to be exactly the same in length, all you have to do is uh, press Alt Shift and then click here, you know, on the note, and all together will be uh, transformed on the same length. So right now I have my kick and I can, you know, I can hear it and I can tweak it. I think less sustain gives a nice punch. Don't go, uh, don't be excessive with the decay because if you open it more, then you're gonna hear the pitch. I think we're good here. Nice bottom end. Yeah. That's, that's, I think this is really, really nice. So, you know, if I want to drive it a little bit more. Ah, oh, <laughs> that, that's, that's the nice thing of the analog drive. Okay, but if you don't have access to a an analog, you know, drive, then you can you can distort it uh, with a good compressor. I usually what I do is uh, one of my favorite compressors is uh, the Teletronics, the silver model from uh, Universal Audio. The thing is that the guys over there have did an amazing job simulating the original hardware. So you know, check it out. Um, yeah, this one. Yeah, the distortion is just great. I want my Unity game to be zero, so I'm just going to insert for the sake of the experiment. Okay, for the example, I'm gonna bounce it anyway on audio, but. Okay, let me let me let me let me record it in audio and I will show you properly how I do it. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to disable that. Okay. Great. So kick. This is my kick here. My input is the Moog. Great. Uh, nice, really nice input. Hot. And I'm going to record it. Yeah. First beat was weak, so I'm gonna grab the second one. <clears throat> Possibly this four bar loop. Great. Because it's it's you know each hit it's a bit different and uh, we're talking about our kick here so maybe you want to choose one 
Okay, so we chose one. Uh, we chose one beat. This is it. This is the recording that I just did. So let's try recreate, if not the same, something close to that, with um, with a um, with a plugin from Sonic Academy. So I'm just gonna create a software instrument. I'm going with mono. Create. That's it. But it's actually it's a sine wave, and uh, it's it has tons of options that you can you know sculpt your own the uh, sculpt your own sound, and I you know it's it's so good, it's so good. Here you mess around with the pitch. I really, really like the low end kicks. I'm going to keep the pitch low. Like that. I'm going to remove the clicks. I'm not a big fan of clicks. What I really, really like are those two options here that you can, you know, you can move up and down and you know, you can instantly Oh, so good And from here, it's, uh, you know, it's the equivalent ADSR that I was doing before on the Moog. So you can uh, choose how fast you want your kick. Yeah, how, yeah. this is a quick attack. The decay, the sustain here. And I release. And you can see that simultaneously it affects all the parameters, the pitch of all the parameters at the same time, which is great. So you can be on tune every time. Yeah. Let's see, just out of curiosity. Yeah, I have a bit more low endy on the pitch. And the distortion is making a difference here. But if I uh insert the distortion here as well, it's not going to be far. It's somewhere around here. And the release on my amplitude, it's faster. bit more low end I mean low on key
Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy with that kick. Because you have, you, you know, everything is about the foundation. And if you have a good foundation, then you can you can manipulate it. You can tweak it with EQing and compression and everything. You can bring it to the, you know, to the stage and, or to the acoustical result that you that you're looking for. I'm happy with that kick. It has the punch. It has the low end. It has a uh, the click. It has a nice release. If I'm not happy with a the release, then I can put a gate on it, you know. It's great. And if I want to distort it, I'm gonna distort it anyway with a with a compressor that I'm gonna show you. So there are two options right now. I'm going to mute that one. Okay. It's nice to have you know, variation, and it's nice to uh, be able to choose what's what's best for you. And you know, this is the nice thing. Um, this is this is what I really prefer. I re really like to have my options, and uh, you know, be able to choose between an analog kick or a digital um, uh, kick, like uh, the one from uh, Sonic Academy, which. You know, it recreates a really, really good result of a uh, of a kick drum. You know, it sounds <laughs> it sounds fantastic. Um, so let me show you how you can drive your kick. Let's say, yeah, you know, yeah. Listen, this one sounds. Yeah, I don't know. That one sounds better, I think. <laughs> that one sounds better, much better. It's different. Some people layer the their kicks as well. I usually prefer not to, not not because I think it's wrong. Uh, it's just that I prefer to have a solid, you know, one um, tone that uh, uh, includes and the clicks that I want. And and th this is why. Sonic Academy have has these options uh, on the plugin. You know, you have three different types of clicks, and you can have you have all these uh, different um, preferences for your for your pitch envelope and for for your amp envelope. So you can mess around with it and have one solid block, let's say, all right, uh, and not try to find different. Uh, type of kicks and try to layer them because you know you can you can make easily mistakes at least this is my uh, opinion on that um so let's let let me show you both ways and uh in in those two kicks how you can distort them and you know make them sound nice um i'm going i'm gonna go with a silver <coughs> this silver type of um this silver model sorry from Teletronics because I think it has a really nice uh, saturated sound, especially when you gain hot. Um, so you can hear already how nice it sounds. I always uh, do my faders 0 dB in unity gain. So I'm go just going to compensate this uh, volume, this this volume that I you know just lowered with a limiter, which is not gonna do anything. It's just gonna compensate the the volume. Nothing else. It's not gonna compress. It's not gonna do anything. So just a quick release, super quick attack, no input. So I'm zero dB here, and uh, one of the things that I always do is that I never ever leave the mix for the end. I always love to produce and mix at the same time, because this is my creative process, one. And secondly, I think that this saves you a lot of time, and you can imagine at the same time how it's gonna sound at the end, uh, you know, how a little bit it's gonna sound the, the, the ending result. So, um, 
always start with minus 10 dB here, picking. Uh, this is an old school trick when we used to work on consoles. Um, thing is that if you start working on minus 10 dB, then everything is going to build on top of that. You're gonna have a very nice low mix, which uh, in the end on your master bus channel, <clears throat> you're gonna have all the headroom that you need for a proper mastering. More or less, uh, if you're uh, on Logic, if you if you work around minus two dBs on the master channel, you know your picks that translates to around minus uh, 12 RMS on the pre-master. So that means until you um, master your your mix <clears throat> to minus 6, minus 5 RMS, which is a master nowadays, it's quite loud, you have about uh, 6 to 7 dBs regarding how low is your mix of headroom. And this is amazing and everything, to me at least, starts with a kick. And uh, through experimentation and through reading and studying and everything, I, uh, you know, and through uh, my studies that I did in school, I, um, and I had some great teachers. We always started our mixes in minus 10 picking, which means once you're happy, with um, with how it sounds, let's say, for this uh, example here with a distortion. So I'm happy here. Great. My pick reduction is my threshold, the equivalent. So I'm happy here. Anyway, this is a quick uh, compressor as a, as, as a model. And uh, right now I'm gonna compensate the lost volume with the output of this limiter. So, yeah, here it is, minus 10. I'm super happy uh, with how it is right now. Let's do the same for our kick here. <clears throat> different type of kick, it's more clean, you know, you might want to go for this result. Still, it's a great, great kick. I'm not sure which I'm going to use, we will see. But I think I, you know, I have a, a slight idea of which one. Quite known for my dirty kicks and beats, and uh, yeah, this is the secret. So if you can see, this compressor is doing nothing. Blew up your speakers right now, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> okay, here we are. So right now, minus 10 on my pick, and I'm gonna start building, you know, on this. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.